Hello everybody! Today we are going to test one of the fastest video cards built on the basis of NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. These graphics cards can be worthily called one of the most balanced solutions in the medium price segment. There is no wonder that we have such a variety of them in the market, it seems that each vendor, a partner of NVIDIA, has been bound in honor to release several versions of this card. EVGA has been much far ahead in this respect, which assortment includes just 9 model series. All of them differ in dimensions, cooling systems, memory capacity and of course in factory overclocking value. And this is the last parameter to which we are going to concentrate our attention today, as our guest is the Valio Card GeForce GTX 960 EVGA FTW Gaming ICX 2.0 Plus, which has an impressive GPU frequency of 1304 MHz. The graphics adapter comes in a medium size box decorated in traditional EVGA colors. The supply side includes a power adapter to two 6 pin PCIe connectors, a DVI to DSAP adapter, a CD with drivers, and all sorts of documentation. The model is based on the original circuit board with the enhanced 8 phase power subsystem. Six phases are reserved for the GPU and two ones are for the video memory. Let's remind that the standard JTX 960 version uses 4 plus 1 phase scheme. The video memory subsystem with a total capacity of 2 GB has been assembled by means of four Samsung GDDR5 chips, which effective speed is 710 MHz. The data exchange is carried out through a 128-bit bus. The graphics core has been impressively overclocked from nominal 1126 MHz to 1304 MHz, almost 16% relative to the nominal value. The GPU boost mode speed is much higher and makes 1347 MHz. Thus, the tested model can be deservedly called one of the fastest video cards built on the basis of GPU NVIDIA GM206. Overclocking directivity of this model is proved not only by the enhanced memory subsystem and high GPU overclocking, but also by two BIOS firmwares. You can switch them using a special slider located near the PCIe connector. The interface panel provides five ports for the image output. There is also support for 4K Ultra HD resolution and possibility to connect four monitors directly. Extra power is supplied via one 8-pin PCIe connector. It has a convenient axis, nothing interferes with the appropriate cable connection. The licensed technology ICX 2.0 Plus cooling is used here as a cooling system. Its main advantage is noise absence at low loads. Fan operation starts only when the GPU temperature exceeds 60 degrees. The PowerLogic fans are based on double wall bearing, that is, they have a high efficiency and a long service life. The main component of the cooling system appears a rather large radiator with three longitudinal heat pipes soldered to the copper base. Soldering method is also implemented here to fix the rips. Important components of the cooler are two heat spreading aluminum plates that dissipate the heat from transistors, memory chips and PCB in the GPU area. In short, this is a very careful approach to the cooling system design, especially regarding a video card with a relatively low TDP level at 120 watts. By automatic mode of the fan speed control, the graphics processor was heating up to 74 degrees under full load. Sure, it's a bit higher ratio than some competitors have, but do not forget about the impressive factor of a clock in available. Also, in this mode, the card was producing a minimal noise and was remaining almost silent compared to other PC components. As expected, the fan have stopped rotating by idle mode of the video card. Thus, the GPU heating was quite acceptable and made 42 degrees. The first thing we would like to draw your attention to is an enormous shortage of video memory at high resolutions, which significantly affected the final results. In some cases, the backlog could reach 100 or even 200 percent from the nearest models in the line series. Another weak point of the tested model is a relatively low memory bandwidth. For example, video cards built on the base of Radeon R9 380 with the same available memory of 2 GB operate much more effectively in 4K Ultra HD mode. An average difference in performance made 8 percent. And, by the way, these are the main competitors for the tested model. It is obvious that most users would prefer faster solutions at a comparable cost. 
The similar conclusions could be made while comparing 4GB versions of JTX 960. The advantage of the latter is about 6%. In our opinion, this is quite a sound reason to pay a few dollars more for the extra 2GB of memory. If we consider the results obtained exclusively in Full HD resolution, then the situation is drastically changing. Due to the high factor overclocking, the tested model is confidently far ahead its analogs based on JTX 960, 5% on average, and can be worth a challenge to compete with R9 380 video cards. And the backlog of R9 380X turns out to be not so high, 7% only. With regard to the results in 4K Ultra HD mode, the difference is much bigger and makes 24%. However, the drive figures cannot fully convey the impressions from the gaming process. This video is clearly shown that even by Full HD resolution in some resource-consuming games, the freezes appear after enabling realistic shadows or during location uploads. For example, in JT5 FPS ratio could be shortly reducing from 30 to 5, wherein the average value remained high. Another example, Fallout 4. Here, FPS deflection was not observed but sometimes there were problems with control accuracy, that is, response time to mouse movements or keystrokes. In total, it would be possible to relate all these factors to poor game optimization, drivers and something else, if not for one point. Recently, a tested EVGA model with 4GB memory did not have such problems. Changing the GPU voltage appeared to be available when using the license utility only. We have managed to overclock the GPU frequency up to 1345 MHz or by 3.8% relative to the nominal value. Almost the same increase has been recorded in the GPU boost mode. As for the VADA overclock in its nominal frequency has been increased from the standard 1710 MHz to 8292 MHz. Generally, it is also a pretty impressive result. In addition, we have to say a few words about parameters that we have been tracking during the testing. In particular, to ensure the stable operation of the video card, we had to raise the GPU voltage from 1187 mV to 1212 mV. It is possible to increase it further, but in this case, it did not lead to any results. We shall also know that the fan speed has been forcibly fixed at the maximum level. Here with the GPU temperature did not exceed 60 degrees at 100% load. After manual parameter optimization, productivity gain made just over 8%. Taking into consideration that the relative overclocking has been low, it is necessarily required to record the obtained result to the tested video card assets. Graphics adapter EVGA GeForce GTX 960 FTW Gaming ICX 2.0 Plus has one of the highest factor overclocking compared to video cards produced on the basis of GPU NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. So firstly, it would be interesting to those users who do not want to delve into the overclocking details, as high frequency rates are not just beautiful numbers, but are an additional performance bonus. It is also worth noting some other positive features such as an amplified 8-phase power converter supplied, defines on reliable ball bearings and efficient cooling system, which turns on to passive mode by low loads. The only thing that spoils the overall impression is failure in greater capacity of the video memory. The test showed that 2GB are obviously not enough if we are talking about high resolutions and maximum graphic settings. Also, the usage of traditional Full HD mode does not guarantee absence of freezes and short-term slowdowns when loading locations. Of course, this is not an EVGA fault. On contrary, the company has done everything possible to unlock the potential of the referred JTX 960 with 2GB of memory. However, if you would like to get a more balanced solution, it's worth considering a 4GB version. Fortunately, EVGA model line does have such a sample. It costs by $20 more, but taking into account the modern trends of computer games, this overpayment would be justified in the long run. Best regards to you and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.